We are super excited to be here with you all today. Um, Chance and I uh, have been working prior to today's session and some meetings, and we're really excited to promote the integration that we have partnered together to provide to make a better experience so, uh, for you, um, our customers. And so in today's session, we are gonna go over a little bit about both of us. So in case you may not be familiar with Satisfy, or you may not be familiar with BASIC, you'll learn a little bit more about each of us and our solutions. And then we want to give you some real life examples of how you could benefit from our solutions and the integration that we have together. We'll cover that integration in a little bit more detail. And then as Alina mentioned, if you have questions that come up throughout today's presentation to throw those into the Q&A, um, we will leave time at the end of today's session to make sure that we can answer any of those questions that come up. Okay, so a little bit about Satisfy to get us started today. We um, have been focused solely on the heavy equipment space. Um, so again, agricultural dealers and manufacturers, as well as the construction and trucking space, um, we really work hard to um, focus on providing better experiences for our customers through employee engagement, as well as customer experience. And exactly what we're talking about here today is integration and really how we've been able to do this and make these solutions scale well for our dealerships is with the ease of use um, that comes into the automation portion of our products. And the integration that we have just released with basic software is a perfect example of that and how you can automate key business processes and eliminate um, work on your internal resources um, to leverage that integration. Our three key solutions, which we'll talk a little bit more about um, as we get into some of these examples with the integration component, but we have our voice of customer solution. Through this, we're able to help dealers boost revenue uh, by leveraging customer feedback, right? So through our automated process, we're able to solicit feedback from your customers on your behalf and drive improvements throughout the dealership that can create more profitability, but also sell more products to those customers, as well as promote their positive experience that they've had with you um, to gain in new business. And then on our voice of employee solution, we're really helping provide a voice to your employees, um, which allows you the ability to better understand what it is that's important to them, their level of engagement with your dealership. And through that, you're able to really focus on employee retention, right? How can we retain those employees that you've invested so much in um, and leverage that as well to attract new talent? And then thirdly, we have our, our Satisfied Reviews program, which is a reputation management software. Uh, that too focuses on customer feedback, um, but it's on feedback that is publicly available online, right? So Google reviews, we're all probably familiar with Yelp reviews when we're looking for a restaurant. And through reputation management, we're able to automate and create a more proactive approach for dealers to seek reviews from their customers, helping them in turn increase their SEO and boost those rankings, which is something that a lot of dealers are becoming more and more focused on. Um, we attribute a lot of our success to the dealers in which we work with. Um, some of you may be here with us today. Thank you for joining. Um, it's through your feedback that we are able to drive improvements, um, integrations such as this one with basic software um, stemmed from a mutual customer reaching out to us. And so we welcome that feedback and really try to drive improvements and make things better based on um, you, our dealers and your needs. A little bit more information to expand on that. I think it's always fantastic when we can bring our dealers into these conversations and allow them to share their um, experiences with you so that you can better understand what others are doing in the industry. Um, we're a real promoter of creating a community of dealers that are like-minded and focused on their employees as well as their customers. And so I just wanted to share with everyone that was here today some of those examples. Um, so we have here on the left, Doug Tibben, who is a John Deere dealer in Canada, I think with 18 locations. And they, um, we interviewed Doug and the recording is available here. So when you get this slide deck and the recording of today's 
um, webinar, you can actually click on the link that says learn more. Um, and from there, you'll be able to get a better understanding from Doug as to what he's done to drive market share. Um, so they've had some really significant growth, um, a 60% increase in market share, uh, which we know market share is something that's really important um, to dealers and something that they're measured on with their OEMs. And so um, he's done that through focusing more heavily on both customers and employees. And so if you want to learn more about that, make sure to click through and read that one. Um, we also sat down with Adam Barry. Uh, Barry Companies is a large Bobcat dealership, um, also Komatsu dealer. So in the construction space, um, they have several um, different dealerships. If you're not familiar with the Barry Companies name itself, um, but you may be familiar with Bobcat of the Rockies or Bobcat of Atlanta, um, Casey Bobcat, et cetera. Those are some of their dealerships. And um, Adam was kind enough to sit down with us and share about their focus on both, again, employees and the culture at Barry Companies, as well as their customers and how they were able to, across their 60 plus locations, be able to uncover some localized issues um, through the customer feedback process that they leverage was satisfied today and how they've been able to really drive some change and improvements within the dealership. And then over on the right-hand side of my screen is Trish Smith with Belcorp Ag, um, again, an agricultural John Deere dealership on the West Coast. And they have been a longtime um, advocate of our employee program where they're soliciting feedback on a regular basis from their staff and they've had significant improvements in their employee turnover rates, which is something I think, again, most dealers are focused really heavily on today. Um, it's been a tough job market. Um, definitely when it comes to service technicians, we have seen dealers struggling to hire as well as retain those employees. And so um, a little bit more about how Trish has successfully implemented an employee engagement program, as well as a company culture that has allowed them to retain uh, a lot of their key employees. Okay, so this is where I jump in. It's about basic software systems. Um, we started in 79 in the back of a tractor dealership years ago. Um, and uh, we are now, we focus basically, we're founded in 79. We're an ERP solution, obviously full business system solution that covers your accounting, your sales, your service, your rentals, your scheduling, your e-commerce solutions. and we have numerous partner interfaces, which is why we're here with Satisfied today, because that's kind of what we feel like. If there's people that can do the job um, and they focus on a certain area, why would we want to do that? We would just need to partner with somebody who already is a professional in that area and makes that easier for all of us. And so that's kind of why we do this. We plan on partnering with, um, you know, any, any anything that, that Satisfied can come up with that we can come up with together that might make you guys uh, – your job easier, make you more productive, you know, give you more productivity, you know, get you in more, you'll be in touch with what your customers need so that you can make your final decisions and, and be more productive as a company. <clears throat> we focus in the ag area, construction, um, heavy equipment, outdoor power, a little bit of power sports and anything that basically if you sell, if you sell service, you sell parts, uh, if your business does that, we could probably be a fit, whether it be marine, whatever it is, uh, with that situation, we could probably be a fit. And um, real life experiences, we have, um, you know, a, a lot of customers who have been working with us for years. Some of you are on here. Anybody that hasn't will know that we are we are like a family we get customers, we expect them to be like a family with us. We try to make sure we take care of them. No one is perfect in the industry, but however, what we do is strive for perfection. So if you can be perfect by striving to be perfect, you can be the best you can be. And that's what we try to do. So we really appreciate anybody that wants to get, take a look at us. And, um, and, and we have several customers that we can put you in contact with references and things like that as well. You can move. Awesome. I think chance just to add on to that too. I think it's very likewise that satisfied, right? A uh, family uh, owned business started that way um, with Ryan and his dad and has maintained that um, very similar to basic. I think we share a lot of the similar 
culture and values. I think that's why our two companies align well together. And I think for those of you on today's webinar, um, just some, a couple things to take away. I think it's always really important, you know, whether you're working with us or not, um, that we share some points that you can take back into your dealership. Uh, maybe it's not something for exactly for your area of responsibility, but there may be somebody in the organization that's responsible, maybe HR, if you hear something employee related and you know there's some issues going on. Um, share that with them. I think that a couple examples that Alina has um, up on the slide here for us today is talking about you know, managing feedback that's coming back from your customers. So even if you're not asking for feedback today, know your customers are leaving you feedback. Um, that could be through reviews that are getting left online publicly, could be through calling your customer support center or just having a conversation with your employee at the counter. Um, you know, make sure that you're sort of organizing that in a way that allows you to easily take action on it. Um, we're all getting pulled in so many directions these days. And I think it's really important that we have processes um, that allow us to easily handle these things when they come in. So it's not disruptive um, to our workday. I think um, one of our dealers talked about how whenever they get feedback in, they organize it in these four key categories, right? They, they identify if it's something that's an issue where we need to follow up with the customer. Um, is it something that um, deserves recognition. So it's like a kudos that could go to an employee because don't forget the positive feedback <laughs> deserves attention too. It's Sometimes it's always a squeaky wheel that gets the grease, but um, make sure that we recognize those employees. And it, it could be something so simple that you just need to take action on it. Like we just need to clean this or take care of something, but we don't necessarily need to follow up with that particular customer. And some things we just need to share, right, within the organization is sort of an FYI just to make other people aware, especially if we have more than one store. Um, it may have happened at one particular store, but we need to share that with everyone else so that we don't have that same issue come up um, at that store as well. So um, there's a couple other things on here that I just wanted to highlight and point out. But if you are asking for customers for feedback, make sure you let them know ahead of time that you value their feedback and why you're asking for it. Um, same thing for employees if you're going to be asking for their feedback. It's really important, I think, that they understand why you're doing this, that you actually are going to listen to it and do something with it. I think that does surprise a lot of customers when they end up hearing back from the business um, when they did leave them feedback. It, it can be somewhat surprising because I think a lot of people think that it doesn't get responded to or heard. Um, and there's a lot of ways to motivate um, employees through feedback. So don't miss that. I know I mentioned like the kudos um, opportunities. There can be incentives um, that can be tied in there as well. There's a lot of information on our website too regarding best practices and what some other dealers are doing to motivate their employees through the feedback. And I think um, similarly on the employee side, a couple of things that have come up recently this year that I wanted to share with you that are on this call that I thought was really interesting. And I, it, these are things that we continue to hear regularly as we have conversations with dealers. And so this may be something that you're already doing or you've thought about doing. Um, or maybe it is new to you, is that quite a few dealers that we work with recently have gone through a process of doing a competitive analysis um, where they are evaluating their compensation plans. And it's not necessarily just for new hires, but also for existing staff and employees. And so um, that may be a bit surprising to some of you, but I think in order to really retain the staff, you need to make sure that you're being competitive in the marketplace. And so um, in some cases, our dealers have um, that we work with, well, we don't provide the service, but utilize other third parties to do it, have been able to um, make modifications to their pay structure for new hires. Um, in some cases, even dealers have gone back and level set at existing employees um, and that for some included an increase and some maybe didn't. Um, but what that's helped them do is they've seen some real benefit from retention that was correlated back to that. And so I think this is something that if you haven't done today, maybe something that you wanna look into, um, reach out to me afterwards if you want more information, um, I can share that with you. And then the other thing too that we've seen, um, two things um, on the employee side is um, a lot of dealers are taking a harder look at their benefit packages making sure that they're really doing a good job in communicating what those benefits are. Um, a lot of times they're not really translated well into a value point. And so um, 
and staff may not really understand what it means, right? And what the financial benefit is of those benefits um, along with their compensation and really kind of tying the benefits into what your employees want. So we see that feedback come back often from employees around things that they're utilizing, not utilizing. And one of the things that was really interesting that I heard at a conference I was at recently is that we have like five different generations for the first time ever working together in um, this workforce. And so really vast, um, you know, demographic differences, right, between some of our younger generations and older generations that are working together, the things that they need or what they may see as a benefit um, could vary quite a bit. And so just kind of making sure that you're meeting the needs of all of the employees or have something for each one of them. And then the third thing here is um, one of the things we see in the employee feedback is that when we look at the level of engagement over the length of time for the employees, is that when they first start out, they're really engaged, um, feel really great about this new job that they just took. But around kind of that one to four year mark, it really starts to dip down. And, um, and beyond that, it starts to come back up. But during that phase is where we see a lot of turnover and disengagement with employees. So quite a few dealers based on that feedback have started to implement a leadership development or employee growth plans to help those new hires start to focus in on where do they go next after that first year? Is there future opportunities for them? Because that's one of the things we hear often is they're unsure as to what the future looks like. Um, and for some, that's okay. But for others, they really want to know and can keep growing and develop and see a future within the dealership. So what they've done is either sometimes they've hired third-party leadership um, development coaches that are exist in our space that focus on heavy equipment, um, or they've even done it internally, start to develop these plans where they start to work with the employees to understand kind of where do they want to go in five years, 10 years? How do we get them there? What does that training look like? And they start to work together on that, which we've really seen a, a big turnover in the engagement rates for dealers who have successfully started to implement plans similar to this. So if that's not something you're doing today, it may be something that you want to put on your radar as you're planning for 2024. Okay. Yeah, do you want to take this one? Yeah, so so basically that's kind of why a lot of our customers, we sent this out to you guys so that you could see what we're wanting to do for you guys with basic software systems and satisfied. We're going to be a lot. We're going to follow daily your part sales, closed sales, including the sales invoice number. Everything's going to be sent over to satisfied so they can start using that data to to um help you guys become more aware of what your customers needs are and be able to be more product, you know, have more productivity, like I was saying. Um, but equipment sales, closed sales, including stock number, model number, make, serial number, service sales, all your uh, sales invoice numbers, uh, make and serial number, all that information goes over as well as rental sales if you do rentals. Um, and all that information goes over to Satisfied. Um, so it's just linking the two together so that they're getting the valuable information that they need to be able to do this service for you guys and help you with um, with what they do for you guys in that in the way of um, customer satisfaction and in employee sa you know satisfaction the whole everything all the way around the around the um, atmosphere of that. Yeah. So as Chance mentioned, right, this information for you that are using Basic today. Um, or considering using basic software, if you were, um, this information would be sent over to Satisfied. Um, so we know then who your customers are. We know, um, let's say they purchased a part. We know which location they purchased that from. Uh, we can reference that invoice number as Chance mentioned. And so we're able to automatically send out like a text or an email um, to your customers on your behalf and be able to get feedback on how did your team do, right? How did your staff perform? Um, or we could even ask them to leave a review um, on Google, right, as an example. And so through that automation, the feedback just flows into your dealership, right? That allows you to really get a better understanding of what performance is like from the customer's perspective, where you need to make business process improvements or changes. Uh, a lot of dealers actually use that information to drive customer service training initiatives. 
So I know you guys invest a lot of money in training and development. And so this can really help kind of gear where your staff maybe is undertrained or maybe the areas are doing really well. You don't need to focus in on or spend that money there um, as an example. And so we're able to kind of tailor the questions specifically to the customers to get a better understanding of how everyone's doing because we have all this great information from basic. So we don't have to ask them, you know, where do they do business and what do they buy? We can ask them very personal questions based on the experience that they had. All right. So kind of from here, as we explain. So to what you, now, Emily? Yeah, right. How that integration What do we do with all this? Do? Yeah. What do we do with all this? Right. So we've got everything set up for you. We've we've done all the hard work, right? Chance all the heavy lifting. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so what's great is it is all automated. So this doesn't require you know your staff to go in and do something. You're already utilizing basic and satisfied. And so we can just turn on this data to flow over for your dealership. And then you um, get the benefit of all the information that's coming back in the system. And so from your customer's perspective, you'll be able to know how your team's doing without having to go out and ask, right? Um, and so uh, from there, I think the big thing is just to reach out to both of us. Um, I think Alina, perfect. Yeah, I think in the next one, we'll have some information for Chance as well. So if you're interested in learning more about our integration that we have with basic software, um, there's a QR code here on the right-hand side that allows you to book a meeting with me. Um, obviously you can always email me or call me. My information is there or send me a text message, whatever's easiest for you to communicate. I would definitely recommend doing that so we can just have a quick conversation on how things work and learn a little bit more. Um, I, I also threw up on the other side of the screen on the left-hand side, um, we publish some industry benchmarking data, which may be interesting to you as well. Um, so even if you're not ready yet to have a conversation, um, feel free to download this copy. If you scan the QR code on the left, you'll be able to download this benchmark report, which gives you a lot of industry statistics around um, customers in the heavy equipment space, um, as well as employee retention um, and engagement there. So uh, that's how you reach out to me and Chance. I think if you want to talk to Chance too, we've got a, his information. Yeah. Yeah. And I got to say on that initial slide that had an R in front of the Chance, but this this correct this email here that you got is correct here on this side. Perfect. So they can just in case they code. yeah just in case they didn't know there's no R in front of chance but not a big deal but the chance at basic and it is a SE and not a CE a lot of people get that confused too but yes please let us know I mean we uh, you can take a look about us and what we do um, we have a new software out that we've been um, that we introduced in uh, 2021. Um, it's a web-based responsive solution, so it's there's no one else out there with this type of technology yet, but it's because you can take any phone, any device, and as long as you have browser and an internet connection, you can access all of your software with no need for apps or anything like that. So it is the wave of the future. It is a lot easier to get to information that you need um, without having to do VPNs or you know, RDPs or, you know, have to pull up an app and be limited to what you can access. This software is is that. And we continue to, um, to uh, move forward and add more and more features and benefits as we grow with it and the more we do with it. But it is a phenomenal option. If you don't have it today, please call me or email me or get in touch with me somehow. I will make sure I show you how to get it. If you're a current customer, we can get you on Primus as well. If you're on basic and you want to come to the off the legacy onto the new, it's uh, definitely a good thing to do. So just feel free to come, reach out to me and we will take care of you. I think that's a great question. Uh, Chance, you want to do it or you want me to take it? Yeah, you can take it. I mean, it's, yeah, I believe it's real time sent to you yeah. guys throughout the yep. day. Yep. Go ahead. Yeah, 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 I think that's great. So, I mean, typically data gets transmitted over to us once there's been an event, right, in your system uh, that information is shared with us. Uh, you know, within Satisfied, you have options to choose kind of when you want to contact your customers based on that transaction. And um, so you can kind of delay the schedule. A lot of times people don't want to send 
a email out necessarily right away or text message, but maybe like a day or a couple of days later, um, once they've had the product or had the, the service work has been complete. So that way they've kind of got the ability to evaluate the work that was performed as well. But again, it's all up to you to kind of choose when you want to send those communications out to your customers. So I think today, currently, BASIC is just sending information to, to Satisfied in order for us to collect the customer feedback, which does uh, become available in our online application. So very similar to, you know, for those that are using BASIC, we have also have an online application where you can view the results. Um, but one thing that's kind of exciting is we're actually currently working on an added level of integration where we'll be able to send the customer data back um, to basic and premise. So you'll actually be able to see your customer information um, in there as well. So when you pull up a customer record, right, you'll have the ability to, to see the sentiment of your customer. Was there an issue the last time they provided feedback? So that's something that's coming in the future. That'll be, I think, an added benefit um, to those basic and premise users as well. Chance, I think on, on our side, I know, you know, we usually need like a week or two to get things set up. Um, and then from there, we just have to let Chance's team know and they'll start sending that data over to us. I think it's relatively quick. It's pretty quick. We just have to turn it on once, you know, turn on the information so that it's kind of like uh, what we've done for years with Parts Locator and in our, like with our manufacturers, it basically, we just turn it on and it starts feeding the information. So it's, it's, I don't believe it's a very long type of a process to get that rolling and going. Perfect. I'll just say thank you. And, and I should have let Emily go first, but um, either way, thank you so much. And uh, I enjoyed it. And we look forward to, uh, to much more success together, working together. Yeah. Thanks, Chance. I second exactly what you just said. I think, you know, we're here to make things better for you, our dealers. And so, um, again, share your feedback with us. Um, again, this this partnership was driven by a dealer. And so I think, please let us know if there's more that you want from the two of us. We really look forward to working together and better supporting you.